What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down Thursday's six-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned into the NBA Deeper Dive. I gotta say, if you listen to Ryan Putnayak today, you're probably in a good spot going into this late night hammer that just got underway no more than like 30 minutes ago. But uh, we have <laughs> Isaiah Jackson, who first play of the game, turns his ankle, doesn't return. Ryan felt like uh, there were a lot of pieces of news waiting in the wings that he was better off fading it. Oh my God, did that come to fruition? Because then the onslaught of no Nikola Jokic, no De'Aaron Fox in those evening hammers just opened up all the value in the world. Looks like guys like Zeke Naji already there. Will Barton already there. Tyrese Halliburton already there. Going to be madness if you don't have those guys. Ryan, how's your night going? Because I'm assuming pretty damn well. Yeah, we'll see how this night ends up going. A, lot, a couple landmines along the way as well. Uh, I chose to go above the field and guys like Marquise, Chris, and Jeremy Lamb. So they were pretty big duds, uh, but they were cheap and they didn't lay an egg like Isaiah Jackson. Hopefully uh, we can pick our way through the rest of the lineups and uh, potentially get to the top. But, you know, uh, process seemed right. Uh, and we move on to tomorrow and where it's a six game slate and expect some late night news yet again. Oh, my process sucked. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I'm a tournament player. I love late swap. I preach it all the time. And I did a terrible job in terms of my Chetty and my Brandon. Well, Brandon Goodwin, I thought was a good play at the min. And if guy was a min, as you're going across, same thing I felt about Marquise Chris, although, you know, it was for me just power forward and, and looking at other people in that spot. And I, I still got to a little bit, but like, God, the Chetty thing and the Isaiah Jackson thing, regardless of injury or Chetty just not playing well, I think they were terrible plays. Like if you had told me 50% Isaiah Jackson on FanDuel, there's no way I would have had any. And I played like 40% of him. And that's just wrong. I think in the long run, doing something like that with so much news. Um, I don't want to dwell on it too much because everybody has bad days. You know, you had a bad day. That was me. I had a bad day. And I'm hoping that I have one or two lineups that can bail me out. But anything to add to that, Ryan, before we get to this six gamer. Playing DFS, you're going to have more bad days than good ones. It's just how it goes. You just got to make sure when you have a good one, it's great. Uh, that's just the nature of this thing. And even like, uh, yeah, getting that one piece of high-owned guy, right? You still have a long ways to go to get to the top. It, it definitely helps, but it, you still have a long ways to go to get to the top. So it's good to put things in perspective at times, and I wouldn't – be too upset about uh playing chetty or isaiah jackson today because they graded out, they graded out as good plays uh and it's it is what it is it was just the nature of the slate the game when the game tips off happened to be earlier than uh and then instead of the other games where there was news pending were later uh those can always change on a day-to-day -day basis and no two slates are the same so on it tomorrow we go at least I have 80% Will Barton. My number one tournament play video. Uh, I'm filling in for Adam today. Well, uh, that was today, Wednesday, and tomorrow on Thursday. Check out the DraftKings and FanDuel tournament plays video that I'm going to be doing. My five favorite plays under 15% at the time of me shooting that. Will Barton was number one on both because I was in love with the situation in the event that there was Nik no Nikola Jokic. That came to fruition. He's under own. But uh, Bogdanovich also under own compared to what I expected for him. No doubt about it. Uh, but guys, smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button uh, notification bell. You know the drill by now if you're watching us on YouTube. But if you're listening to us on the podcast, first of all, hello. Hi, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, or if you've found us before uh, thank you for listening still even though i'm a nerd uh smash that five smart five star uh review that goes just so far for us we can't tell you enough for doing that uh and it will allow us to keep doing free rolls and contests and things that i want to do that are just nice for the people because you guys are the most loyal listeners our little bubble our nice little nba dfs bubble i can't tell you how much i appreciate you guys but ryan enough niceties let's get to this six game are you ready to get going my friend let's ride we go to the top of garden. By the way, he absolutely smashed the deeper dive today. I mean, God, I wish I had listened to you more. Seems like a good idea. So let's listen to him today. That's what I'm going to plan on. Steph Curry, 10-4. DeJounte Murray. So we have a lot of news. We have some back-to-backs here for certain guys. But DeJounte Murray, questionable with a wrist injury. Uh, obviously not a lower body injury if he's able to play through it. I don't know if it's his shooting hand or not. Well, left wrist, so not shooting hand. Good. 
wanted to double check that, but a 10 three there for him. If he plays, I think you play DeJounte Murray. If he doesn't, I wouldn't play DeJounte Murray, DeJounte Murray. Cause then you're getting a zero in your lineup. We have Trey young here, a uh, shoulder injury. He didn't play obviously all of those Atlanta pieces. I was like infinity over the field on my boy, Kevin Herter, who all of a sudden is now just, I think my boy, I, I have to make him as such, but Trey young, we'll see if he ends up giving it a, a, a shot here. Chris Paul, 9,700. Once again, just completely playing out of his damn mind right now uh, in just an unbelievable way. These assist rates are just absurd. Russell Westbrook on a back-to-back, but if no LeBron James, 9,600, just fine. Devin Booker, we know his kind of upside, but I mean, even 8,500, Tyrese Halliburton, Golden State, tough spot, I suppose, but uh, Fred Van Fleet, 8,800. These guys are just playing absurd minutes, and it happens every single night. 39, 38, 39, 38. It's it's crazy, and that just brings him upside. If he's low on, give me all of it against Chicago. Talk to me about the top end of guard, Ryan. Yeah, top end of guard is great, and those guys are all fantastic options to go to. Russ uh, is a great if there's no LeBron James, I think, in a Clippers matchup. No issues going to Russ there. But uh, in terms of upside, Golden State versus Sacramento, Steph uh, seems like a solid option even at 10-4. Uh, DeJounte Murray continues to crush Miami matchup. We'll see if Kyle Lowry returns. Um, he's dealing with some personal issues. Uh, Deshante Murray has been a pretty rock solid all season long. I, I don't. I'm not that interested in Trey Young. I, I would rather go to the guys, the guards on the other side of the game, and guys like Book and Chris Paul instead of going to Trey Young. Well, Fred Van Vliet, 8800. You nailed the minutes thing, and he's great against Chicago. But I think a guy, another guy who has guard eligibility, and I think we'll both have interest in him is Anthony Edwards in a Detroit matchup. Yeah. Uh, makes a ton of sense to go to Anthony Edwards and spending down a little bit lower. Uh, jumping around, Levine Cunningham and Russell are fine in that tier. I think Derek White sticks out to me quite a bit at 6K. I like going to Derek White a lot uh, at 6K in that matchup. You know who I love to get to at 6,100 because apparently he's a flamethrower from another planet since he returned. Gary Trent Jr. is 6,100, and I feel like we need to just keep riding this wave. I don't know what happened, but legitimately hit the ground, absolute, not even running, hit the ground, and there are flames coming up from the NBA floor, burning wood on as he's going, because I'm telling you, these three-point numbers are no joke. We're talking, since he returned on the 21st, three for seven. 4 for 11, 5 for 10, 6 for 10, 5 for 15, 9 for 15, and 6 for 10. Those are all from three. He's put a five consecutive 40 burgers. He's playing low 40s minutes here in the last two, both competitive games. They don't want Svi Mikhailuk touching the floor. They don't want any of these other Yuta Watanabe touching the floor. It is like all these starters and then smatterings of Precious Achua and the Champagne dude, but legitimately Gary Trent 6,100. I'm not going to call him a pivot because if there's no John T. Murray, I'm going to play an infinite amount of Derek white, but it's Gary Trent. When you see a guy knocking down shots like this, and it, it seems like he still hasn't been popular on any of these slates. Are you willing to invest even if you haven't been before? Man, I got to shy away a little bit. It's uh, he's been shooting lights out. Uh, you're going to need him to continue to shoot at that rate. I just don't think it's sustainable. I'd rather, like I said, go to uh, Derek White instead or even spend down a little bit less to Reggie Jackson in terms of ownership. I do think Gary Trent's going to have some ownership as well at 6K. Yeah, three-point bonus if there was a site to play him, probably on DK. But like, There's a guy like Tyler Hero at around that price range as well. All these other guys, we've seen a more of a consistent upside than Gary Trent's hot streak. I think he's a fantastic um, three-point shooter, don't get me wrong, but doesn't seem sustainable. Now, if guys are ruled out, he's definitely back in play even at 6K. Okay. Just wanted to throw it out there. It was more of just, you know, testing the waters. Patrick Beverly, sub 5K. <sighs> God, these guys. D'Angelo Russell, Patrick Beverly. If one of them plays, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a firm stance on that yet. Anything else for you from DraftKings? No, I think we can uh, go into the next one. All right. To FanDuel we go. You know the drill, position by position. Deshante Murray's 10-5 there. If he plays, play him. If he doesn't, don't. Uh, Chris Paul, 10K. Steph Curry, 9,300. That steep discount you're getting over on the old FanDuel.com. Always useful. Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, both shooting guards, small forward eligible. 
Uh, both have shown immense upsides from time to time. Jimmy Butler, though, uh, just status we continually need to pay attention to. He's questionable. Kyle Lowry, if he's back too, there's nothing there. But if they both sit, uh, hi, Bam out of Iowa. How are you? Nice to meet you as well. As well as Tyler Hero, we're on FanDuel. He's all the way down to 6K, and it's just crazy to be looking at. I think that that makes it a high point by Tyrese Halliburton, 7,600. Always the guy who sticks out to me over here. But uh, I also want everybody paying attention to Cade Cunningham. There could be some value that opens up here in his absence. I'm not sure with Jeremy Grant back if everybody's going to grade out that well. But a Minnesota matchup definitely helps. Talk to me about guard on FanDuel. Yeah, guard on FanDuel. No issues if you want to spend up for one of those studs. Really like the savings on book off of Paul. Steph Curry looks outstanding at 9-3, even with Clay Thompson there in the picture. So I like those guys. Not that much interest in Trey Young there. I think uh, going in the next year, we've seen 8,500 Russ Westbrook. If he lays uh, an egg today, I think we still go back to him. And we just kind of ride him until LeBron comes back, and then we kind of forget about Russ. But in the next tier, guys, if Russell D'Angelo Russell goes, uh, if there's no minutes limit, I think we can go to him at 7K in a Detroit matchup where he should be completely fine. Uh, and then his teammate, Anthony Edwards, 8,300. No issues going to him. Now, we know Kyle Lowry, I believe, is questionable. He hasn't been he hasn't been gone with any injury or anything, but he's $6,200. And he might be um, – they might monitor his minutes in terms of conditioning. But at $6,200, Kyle Lowry, no issues if you want to sprinkle him in. But I think Derek White at $6,400 just seems like a better play. But just keep an eye on the Kyle Lowry situation. Tyler Hero, only six k. No one that is super cheap that sticks out to me at this moment. No one really under five k. Um, in the if though if Russell and Russell is out, Jalen Noel, but he hasn't done really much. But I think. You got to keep an eye on the DR and Fox situation as well. It would open up Tyrese Halliburton yet again. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton, seventy six hundred. I, I had said it earlier too, where I think he's still viable with DR and Fox. I don't know what those minutes are going to look like with Fox instantly. Plus, he has north of a, I believe it was thirty percent assist rate, even with DR and for uh, DR and Fox on the floor this season. Not too shabby. Still some meat left on the bone there. AK, that would be a different story, but uh, seventy six hundred, I can get there still. Uh, guard over on Yahoo, our sponsor Yahoo, where they're offering a $12 10K to first contest that just looks fantastic. 11% management fee. Go play that thing. Uh, best point per dollar. I think that would be the right way of saying it. Um, or point per not rake. 11% management fee is what I'm looking at there. And you want to be playing in that thing. But on the top end, Deshante Murray, 47. Steph Curry, 45. We've got Chris Paul and Devin Booker, 40 and 39. And Fred Van Vliet, $37 along with Russ Westbrook, 35, Tyrese Halliburton, 33. I'm just listing off dudes here at the top end. I think everybody you can make a case for, but Russell Westbrook in this Lakers-Clippers game without uh, without LeBron James would just be awesome at 35 once again. Uh, hard for me to get away from that. Tyler Hero, 25 if there's no Jimmy Butler. I know Kyle Lowry would make a lot of sense to me. What sticks out to you? Because I know Io Tassunmu does not. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at the prices here, I think uh, Russ is fantastic at that price tag. Uh, I like going to him. Now, there's a bunch of guys in the mid to low tier that stick out to me. Clay Thompson at $18. I'm willing to go to him at that price tag. Those minutes have been gone from the 24 to 25, 26, 27, 28, and we're getting those minutes to go up. And Clay uh, is too cheap at $18, I think, for the upside in a Sacramento matchup. So, now looking at other guys, if there's no Cade Cunningham, Corey Joseph will stick out at $13. Uh, and I think you can definitely take your chances on a Luke Kennard at $14. I know the minutes are all over the place, but Bogdan Bogdanovich, if there's no Trey Young, I think is pretty rock solid as well. And uh, keep an eye on, yeah, Derek White again, sticks out at 25 I just think he's slowly getting, getting some getting himself back in the role that we know Derek White as. I know he's taking kind of a backseat to DeJounte Murray's uh, kind of booming season that DeJounte Murray has gone through, but I think Derek White's still pretty rock solid. Yep, I'm with you there. And Nicholas Claxton has 36 and a half on FanDuel at halftime. Those are normal things on FanDuel, but you know what? I don't want to worry about FanDuel. I want to worry about our sponsor, Yahoo, where you can get one free month of Osmo Plus Platinum simply by depositing $10 or more 
playing in any paid content contest and boom, tough act into Nacton. That'd be the Madden commercial. But either way, you guys need to be playing over at Yahoo NBA. Obviously, we are continuing the grind here. Uh, NBA All-Star break coming up soon, but uh, we're still going to have content for that. We're still covering that just like we are the Pro Bowl this weekend. Excited to be talking a little bit of that. Uh, but we have NFL, we have NHL, we have PGA, we have MMA, everything that you could possibly want for DFS content here at Osmo. Get that free month with promo code Osmo over at Yahoo. Get that free month. Uh, just deposit $10 or more playing in those paid contests. So stop guessing, start winning, and join us here at Yahoo. And thank you so much to them for their sponsorship of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. As I said, that $12 contest is just awesome. So go play in that thing. I tried to make a run at it the other night. I did not come up. Uh, I came up short. We'll just put it that way. It was not pretty. LeBron James out more than likely. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George continuing to be out for the Clippers. Jimmy Butler questionable. It's the walking wounded at the top of the forward position over on DraftKings. Starting, really, DeMar DeRozan. I know he'll be playing more than likely, and now that I said that, he'll probably get rested for whatever reason. Pascal Siakam, 9K in that same matchup. Uh, it's Pascal Siakam with all the usual suspects there. Playing tons of minutes. Always upside there just purely because of that, but uh, not my, I don't know, 9K still seems pretty cheap for him there. Uh, Anthony Edwards, 8K, we covered him. But really pay attention to some of this other news that we have going here in this bit range. Cause if there's no Cade Cunningham, can we fire up Jeremy Grant at 6,500 knowing that he played 29 minutes first game in nearly what nearly two months. Yeah, I definitely think we can fire up Jeremy Grant with or without uh, Cade Cunningham at 6,500. So no issues going to Jeremy Grant. I think taking a look at Anthony Edwards at 8k seems to make a lot of sense. Keep an eye on the situation with Jimmy Butler. I believe Jimmy Butler is questionable for tomorrow. Uh, if Butler goes, I like him. Uh, obviously, you can't play him if Butler is out, but uh, Jimmy Butler, 9,400, uh, seems to be pretty solid. Zach Levine is questionable. If he's gone, DeMar DeRozan seems uh, in a great spot against his former team. Now, spinning a little bit down, Andrew Wiggins has been playing really well since he got named uh, first-time All-Star starter. So Wiggins at 6,700. Makes a lot of sense against Sacramento. Now, if you want to spend down a little bit, uh, there, we got a ton of news in San Antonio. There will be no Jock Lando, no Jakob Pertl. So with that situation, uh, we might get some extra minutes. A guy like Devin Bissell. Uh, we'll talk about Drew Eubanks on the other, uh, when we get there. I, I don't think that Thad Young will play. We've seen Thad Young play some garbage time at the he end of the game. We can hope uh, he plays. Uh, he's 3K, so... If you're looking for a 3K guy in Thad Young, definitely take some chances with him. And uh, Sadiq Bay, if there's no uh, Kate Cunningham, a guy who can get you the three-point bonus, makes a lot of sense. I believe Otto Porter should return, and he's 5K. Him and Kelly Olenek look like pretty solid 5K players with some upside. Yeah, with Drew Eubanks, they basically put – a soft cap of like 24 minutes on him in some of his starts. It seems like, has he played over 24 minutes this entire season in a game? I that I'm don't have off the top of my head. I'm going through, obviously the box score is not showing anything super far down. Uh, going back to October, he has not played over 24 minutes in a single basketball game this season. I, I think they have to play Thaddeus young. And I say that anxiously in, in just, begging for them to watch Hunter and Gomez is there and he's been playing some minutes. He played on the 30th uh, against Phoenix. There's 15 minutes that he played there uh, on January 30th. So maybe they'll find some way to absolutely shaft Thaddeus young again, but God, I, I just don't know how you would prioritize Hernan Gomez over young, but maybe they do. Maybe they do. That's just what it is uh, going to be a fun talking point. A uh, cock, obviously cock. That's fun to say. Yeah, Devontae Kaycock, if he gets a start, he seems like a pretty awesome play, I think. So keep an eye on the Devontae Kaycock situation. High fantasy point per minute player from what I remember. Yes, yes. He's uh, one of those summer league special players that I've uh, known for the past couple of years. But Yeah, because you smash summer league and it's not fair. Let's go over to FanDuel. Uh, it is fair. It's a fair game. Anthony Davis, 9,600 there. Jimmy Butler, 9,500. Uh, 9, we talked about DeRozan already there. 
with those shooting guard small forward eligibility. But I'm looking at Pascal Siakam, 9,200, a little bit better tag for him over on FanDuel just comparatively with the payout structure or the the salary structure, excuse me. Bam Adebayo, 8,200. I absolutely love that number. If there's no Jimmy Butler, no Kyle Lowry, I don't know how I wouldn't get to a ton of that, along with the field, of course. Um, Gary Trent, where there's no three-point bonus, 7,100. I saw people clicked on his name the other night. I'm not going to be one of those people on that site. That's why you got to be sensitive to where they're priced and where you're playing them. Gary Trent, less of a, in anything for me over on FanDuel, but Harrison Barnes is sub 6K. I'm not sure what everybody's going to look like on a back-to-back here, but Darren Fox, I'm assuming, is going to be questionable coming into this one again. Trey Young, if he's out, we've got Bogdanovich, your boy, Bogdan, up there to... 6k and he you know played 30 minutes that's nice to see the other night after having a soft minutes cap and kevin herter played 38 so i think there's a lot of value to be had here a lot of news that's still yet to break but uh where are you kind of gravitating on fanduel ryan yeah looking at fanduel it's got to be anthony davis at 9-6 i know uh power forward eligible i think anthony davis looks like pretty rock solid play even Jimmy Butler and Anthony Edwards uh, definitely have the upside to take things down. Prefer both of those guys than re- and then spending up for a guy like DeRozan at his price range. Now, if there's no Cade Cunningham, Jeremy Grant's going to stick out at 6,600. Bam Adebayo was amazing last game. Now, a San Antonio matchup that shouldn't scare him. I think he's uh, fine to go to as well. Even better if there's no Jimmy Butler. Uh, now, looking down, uh, looking to spend down a little bit. We get a range of guys like Rashawn Holmes, who's playing pretty well today. Uh, he's spent only at 5,400 in a Golden State matchup. And then Sadiq Bay, we touched on if there's no Kate, 6K only. Same price as Tyler Heroes, looks pretty good. Marcus Morris, 5,200. Uh, he's not been as good this season. He might carry some ownership at 5,200. Going to be an interesting, maybe come under the field type of situation. Now, if you want to go all the way down, I think Drew Eubanks, you can definitely take your chances at 4,500. No issues if he's going to start. And then another guy cheaper than him, Thad Young. People are potentially going to play him. Uh, so we'll see at 3,500. does open up a lot for you. That would be fun to get some Thad Young. Please, God, one-time dealer. People don't understand. Chicago, the guy would play like 22 minutes and just destroy. Like destroy from time to time last year. So... Uh, I think Chicago would probably like a Thad Young coming off the bench right now. That's just my feeling. Yeah, yeah. They don't have some depth. Obviously, the injuries to Patrick Williams definitely hasn't hurt. Alex Crusoe has been hurt. And then Derek Jones Jr. Yeah, they've lost a lot of their depth, and I think it might uh, come back to haunt them in meaningful games down the stretch. Yeah, unless they're playing just DeRozan and – Lonzo Ball can get healthy and and like if they can just play all these guys 40 minutes a game, maybe they can avoid having to have a bunch of dudes out there. Plus, you know, you can have usage hogs in Levine and and DeRozan just kind of be out there and stagger it and they'll figure out a way to to make it work. But as I said, Thad Young would be a great piece for them right now. Let's head to forward over on Yahoo here. We've got DeRozan $39, speak of the devil. Uh, Jimmy Butler 45 actually up top there, a little bit more expensive. Uh, as I'm going up and down the pricing, I mean, Jeremy Grant, probably the least appealing at $29 over here, as opposed to $6,600 on FanDuel, $6,500 over on DK. We're looking at Macau Bridges. Do not be the person who chases waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. And do not roster $22 Macau Bridges. Low fantasy point per minute guy. Yeah, he played 40 minutes the last two games. Put up 40 and 51, but I do not care. I would not like to roster him. Jared Vanderbilt, same kind of thing applies. Although, you know, he only played 19 minutes. I thought he was going to destroy the slate in a meaningful way. Hamadi Diallo, if there's no Cade Cunningham, would be very contrarian, I'm assuming. But Devin Vassell, I think, uh, could be seeing some increased workload there. Uh, Played really well, 35.6 fantasy points, 30 minutes. Uh, You had talked about him for a hot second, wanted to reiterate that. And Moses Moody, welcome to the starting lineup here with the Golden State Warriors. I don't know what the rest of the value is going to look like, but I'm not expecting 37 minutes with Clay and and uh, Steph Curry in the mix there once again after their uh, rest day and then still beating San Antonio. But Moses Moody, mid-20s minutes, I think you could do worse than $12 over on Yahoo. Who sticks out to you on that site? Hey, look at the Yahoo slate. It's a uh, spend up at the forward spot on both sides. Uh, looking at guys like Anthony Edwards at 33, I like a lot. He seems pretty ideal. I mean, then then there are guys who are priced kind of expensive, like OG and Jeremy Grant, their respective roles. 
DeRozan, 39. Yeah, I think in a Toronto matchup, he should be fine. But in the mid-tier, there's no one really that excites me. Uh, I'm looking at a guy like DeAndre Hunter, $14, but he's like inconsistent. Otto Porter's 18. Seems expensive for the role he's in. We might get some some minutes sprinkled away at Kellen Johnson at the five if they don't want to play Thad Young, which is completely possible the way Popovich has handled Thad this season. If you want to go down a little bit more, can't really go there in confidence. Chimezi Metu's there at $10. I don't know what those minutes are going to look like. I don't know. Uh, I think Jay Crowder at $14 if you just want a guy with who's going to play uh, high 20s minutes, um, can get hot type of situation. But you nailed the Devin Vassal's take. I think at $16 seems pretty good to go to. But no one really jumps off the page at this very moment. Maybe Terrence Mann at 12 but he's been all over the damn map. I do. I don't know what to do with him. He's. I saw him there, but you know, you putting your name and reputation behind a guy that all he does is do nothing. And then there's random games like against Washington, where he and Luke Kennard just took over the entire game in the second half and closed. And he played 32 and a half minutes. It's like I. I don't really know what to say about these Clippers guys. Oh, and Serge Ibaka, Nicholas Batum. You know, in the event that there is no Zubats out there, I mean, they're just cheap dudes. So if you need a cheap dude, you can maybe rotate through some of those guys, but none of them are going to feel good whatsoever. More like getting hit with a brick in the head. That's the way I feel. Wow. Aggressive. Center we go. <laughs> Aggressive. <laughs> it would hurt. That I mean, come on. Nicholas Batum and Serge Ibaka on purpose, even though Nicholas Batum, most second half points by a Clipper this season. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But either way, center, let's go to it. There are options here at the top end and the bottom end. Carl Anthony Towns 10K has started to just show a ceiling again. That's enjoyable. That's 50 plus in four of his last five. Let's go, Cat. 10K. Anthony Davis, ya boy, is sub 10K on this slate for some reason. He was, what, 10-2 today over on the DraftKings slate? Now he's 9,800. Uh, Pascal Siakam, obviously, you can play power forwards, so do that probably more than likely. Bam out of bio, 8,400. All the aforementioned Miami pieces, if they're out, you fire that up. But we got to talk about San Antonio with no Pirtle, with no Landale. It is Eubanks, Trey Young, or Kaka. So Drew Eubanks, 3,300. If he starts, how much Drew Eubanks is too much Drew Eubanks? I think Drew Banks looks like a solid, solid play at that price tag. No issues going to Eubanks at all. So. Now, spending up the opportunity cost is missing out on a cat in a Detroit spot, which is that can be pretty significant. Then we get Anthony Davis with potential uh, with no LeBron James. He will be on a back end of a back to back, but AD definitely has the potential to be a high score, uh, the highest scoring player on the slate. Now, looking down the list a little bit, Sean Holmes at 5K. Uh, if there's no Backley, I do think those minutes seem more solidified. But Eubanks definitely, where you can roster two centers on. Uh, DraftKings seems like a pretty darn good play. This person on FanDuel is going to win by legitimately 30 plus fan. Like they're going to win by 30. Batum and Boggy going in the late night hammer. Evan Fournier. That's another thing you got right. Cause he goes nuts on Wednesdays at the garden. Isn't that a narrative that was dropped at live or di- the deeper die? Die. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Yeah. He falls out at the, uh, Oh, I think it's like national TV at the Garden. Yeah, it's so weird. Must He's have done it multiple times. Watching. He's what? He's done it a lot this year. I know, but it's so annoying. He did it again. Thirty-nine fantasy points tonight. Uh, whatever. What a dumb sport today. It's going to be amazing tomorrow, though. It's going to be amazing tomorrow. We also have a Nurk bomb incoming. That'll be fun. Carl Anthony Towns, 10 2. Anthony Davis, 96, where you play him at power forward or center over on FanDuel. Vooch sitting there, 8,700. Uh, starting to go down with that tag. That's useful at some point. I don't really know what to say about Clint Capella. He's the most overpriced dude, period, if he's just going to be playing low 20s minutes here for this Hawks team. But my guy, Rashawn Holmes. I don't know what we're doing here, why his price went down $300 out of the middle of nowhere here. It was one of my favorite tournament plays today. Wish I had a lot more of that $4,100 Nicholas Claxton that existed over there, but uh, I'm still going to go back to the well here with the likes of Rashawn Holmes. He played 20, he's played 21 minutes so far, five minutes left in the third, 
nine points, nine rebounds. I mean, he was just my favorite tournament play today. I, I didn't really find a way to get away from him. I see no chance that he's not going to be popular, though, at 5,400. So at least throwing that out there. Uh, center, Drew Eubanks, 4,500. You can play him at power forward. God, is that useful. Uh, who's your favorite center plays over on FanDuel, Ryan? Yeah, look at the center spot on FanDuel. It's Anthony Davis and Cat lead the way, and they seem like awesome plays at their respective price tags. AD does have power forward center eligibility, which definitely can help him out. While well, you mentioned Rashawn Holmes, I think he's a great spend down option just because he opens things up for you. So it makes a lot of sense to take your chances on Rashawn Holmes. While other guys at their respective price tags, no one really excites me. Uh, DeAndre Ayton has the upside to win a slate, but hey, coming back from injury, the minutes might not be at full capacity yet. So some red flags there. Uh, but outside of that center slate, there's Cat, and then there's obviously – uh anthony davis so those guys definitely the way and everyone else outside of rashawn holmes seem like very very mediocre below average plays all righty let's round it out center in yahoo pascal siakam 42 dollars center only there well everybody's only the position that they're at over there that's how yahoo works that's why it's great carl anthony towns 41 anthony davis 41 Fun decision point there. Uh, obviously, Pascal more overpriced there, but going to be lower owned. Bam, 35. Uh, nothing else really to add there. Kavon Looney, $16. <laughs> I remember we were talking, and I just said that I liked him that one slate. He only played 23 minutes against San Antonio. They ended up closing small because Kaminga started going bazinga. How was that? Is that good? Did you like that one? I didn't expect that to come out. Nope. There's another joke, and I'm not going to catapult it right off the bat there. But what? who is your favorite center play over on Yahoo to round out the NBA Slate Starter podcast tonight? So um, there on Yahoo, it's got to be the AD price tag at $41. Him and Cat being the same price tag. And I think there's enough value to get in both of those guys on Yahoo. Uh, I think spending up makes a lot of sense to them. Siakam comes in at 42 and yeah, can see Akam outscore those guys? Yeah, if Nick Nurse is going to play in 46 minutes, which is definitely on the table, uh, definitely take your chances there. I like Aiden at this price tag, even with those minutes not there all the way. Uh, we touched on Bam. Uh, if there's no Butler, seems ideal. I think he's okay if Butler does play. But no real reason to spend down outside of uh, $10 uh, Eubanks and $18 Rashawn Holmes. Everyone else uh, kind of sucks on the slate. There's not that many center options to go to, so it's going to be incredibly important to get yourself that potentially the highest scoring one or the best point per dollar uh, uh, play at that center spot across the board, really, because it's kind of bleak. I know Eubanks is going to be very popular, but there's, like you said, he hasn't played more than four, 24 minutes all year long. That's my favorite analysis from Ryan. Uh, everybody else sucks. Just don't play them. Play the guys that I said, like that's, that's what I'm here for. Because it's succinct, it's beautiful, it's easy to understand. Guys, that's the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. Excited to be through. Uh, well, I mean, we've got a couple more teams here left. I, I didn't want to chump the gun here. It's Wednesday night. We're going to be firing up one more for Thursday night. Then we're at the end of the week. But Ryan, any final words for the people? No, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the deeper dive. I will be back tomorrow on the deeper dive again. So you get to see me uh, on another day on the deeper dive. So I will catch you then. But if not... We'll catch you on tomorrow night's Slate Starter uh, to wrap up the week. He's Ryan. He faded Isaiah Jackson. I'm Eric. I did not, and I'm upset. We'll see you guys later.